Uh, last year, the reason I sought this debate here today is because, like many Irish people, I've been horrified by the violence in Gaza and disappointed by our government's response. Over the last three weeks, Israel has massacred more than 1,300 Palestinians, including over 300 children, in their homes, their hospital beds, their mosques, and even in UN schools and emergency shelters. It has injured a further 7,000, including many children who will be crippled for life with horrific physical injuries and psychologically scarred from seeing the rest of their family blown up in front of them. It has also levelled thousands of homes and destroyed Gaza's basic infrastructure, leaving people without water or power. The Israeli authorities have tried to justify all of this by pleading Israel's right to defend itself against Hamas and other armed Palestinian groups. I condemn here, as I have elsewhere, the firing of rockets at residential areas in Israel. I also condemn the fact that three Israeli civilians have been killed in the last few weeks. However, international law is clear. Israel requires Israel to respond in a way that is proportionate, is directed at military rather than civilian targets, and which takes adequate precautions to ensure the safety of civilians. Israel has willfully ignored these requirements in executing a murderous campaign designed to instill terror in the entire Palestinian population. Not only is this immoral, it is a war crime, and one for which the international community must hold it to account. I was shocked, Minister, last week when the Irish government chose to abstain in a UN vote to establish an inquiry into Israel's war crimes in Gaza. As a country, we have always prided ourselves on using our voice in international institutions like the UN to promote human rights and stand up for the oppressed. Last week, Minister, we were shamefully silent. Our government hid behind a collective EU statement claiming that the reason for the abstention was because the motion didn't criticise violence on both sides, when in fact it did. It simply levelled greater criticism at Israel because it has been responsible for a long and horrific catalogue of human rights violations that is simply without comparison on the Palestinian side. And it targeted its planned investigation at Israeli war crimes because at that point Hamas had killed two civilians while Israel had murdered hundreds. Minister, I know that you've long been an ardent supporter of Israel, but you have a responsibility to represent the views of the Irish people as a whole, most of whom are horrified by what Israel has been doing. You also have a responsibility to do what you can to put pressure on Israel to stop its current assault on Gaza, to lift its blockade and to end its illegal occupation of Palestine. A return to the situation that existed before the current assault is not good enough. When I visited Palestine last year with Christian Aid, I saw firsthand how Israel's siege of Gaza has made life hell for its inhabitants, half of whom are children. I saw how Israel is continuing to expend, extend its occupation of the West Bank and East Jerusalem, confiscating Palestinian land and planting thousands more Israelis on it. While the international community has been talking about a two-state solution, Israel has been doing everything in its power to make such a solution impossible. A spokesperson for the UN Relief Agency for Palestine criticised Israel yesterday for killing children as they slept next to their parents in a UN-designated shelter. He said, children killed in their sleep, this is an affront to all of us, a source of universal shame. He went on to say that the world stands disgraced. Minister, I say that the world stands disgraced for standing idly by while Israel has ignored countless UN resolutions since 1967. I say that America stands disgraced for arming the Israeli war machine. The international community stands disgraced for not backing up our condemnation of Israel's illegal occupation of Palestine with real action. And we stand disgraced for expressing faux surprise and horror as Israel attacks Gaza for the third time in five years. The experience of the last 47 years has shown us that condemnation of Israel is not enough. Ireland, the EU and the UN must take real action. For a start, we must use our economic power to force Israel to stop its current attack on Gaza and end the occupation of Palestine. The EU must immediately suspend its trade agreements with Israel and impose economic sanctions. It should also ban outright the importation of goods from the illegal Israeli settlements. It is simply not good enough to condemn 
the ever-expanding settlements while tacitly supporting them by buying goods produced there. It's time to put our money where our mouth is. And if Europe as a whole is not prepared to do this, Ireland should step up and show leadership by doing it ourselves. We must also insist on proper international monitoring of any ceasefire agreement. Hamas complied with the 2012 agreement until last month, but Israel did not, refusing to lift its blockade on Gaza. An international force must also be put in place along the border between Israel and Gaza to monitor the ceasefire and investigate alleged breaches of it. And an international body must be given the task of monitoring the lifting of the siege. As Christian Aid has pointed out, both sides must also be held to account for their violations of international law so that a message goes out that no party to any conflict can target civilians with impunity. In the media term, we must also ensure that UNICEF and other aid organisations have the money they need to respond to the current humanitarian crisis in Gaza and help to rebuild homes, schools and vital infrastructure there. But aid for Palestine is not enough. Only a proper long-term solution will provide all Palestinians and indeed all Israelis with the peace and security they deserve. Finally, I regret that we only have five minutes today, uh, as I would like to speak about the other situations in Iraq, Syria and Ukraine, but I will push those issues when we return in September. Thank you.